With House Orlok firmly in control of the Prometheum trade, their power grows. Burnings and unrest continue throughout Acropolis with House Cordor being at the center. House Cordor ranks swell as fear grips the sector. The two gangs would eventually have to cross paths as power of this magnitude can only belong to one. House Orlok prepares an ambush in the scenario, the trap. It's coming up next as MGM presents Ashes of Acropolis. Welcome back to MGM and another Necromunda Battle Report. Episode 17 sees a top of the table match between House Orlok and House Cawdor. We're coming out of a down week and all gangs were granted 250 credits. All fighters were able to recover. The House Orlok Armsmaster Forge gained an advancement to increase his movement. They used their credits to recruit two wreckers with hand flamers and flak armor. They have 10 total fighters with a gang rating of 1385. House Caldor gets a few tweaks as well. Priest Gabriel gains a skill advancement, adding Overseer to his repertoire. The Specialist Lazarus adds one to his ballistic skill, and the Bone Picker Simon increases his cool. For recruiting, they add two brethren with blunderbusses and flak armor. They also add another with reclaimed auto gun from the stash and bomb rats with crack grenades. The scenario for today is the trap. House Caldor will be defending and crews are custom six. House Caldor will split into groups of at least two fighters and set one of them within two inches of the center of the battlefield. House Orlock will then set up six inches from any battlefield edge. House Caldor will then deploy the remaining groups by rolling a d6. On a one to five, they must set up within two inches of the group in the center. On a roll of six, they must set up anywhere outside of two inches from an enemy fighter. Gang tactics are custom to House Orlock selects Seize the Initiative and Showboating. House Cardor selects Rise Anew and Lucky Shot. Both gangs can score a victory point for each enemy fighter they take out of action. They get three for a leader, two for a champion, and one for any other fighter. Instead of rolling for priority for the first round, the defender will roll a d6, adding one to the result for each fighter they were able to set up outside the center of the battlefield. If the result is 7 or higher, the defender takes priority, otherwise it will be the attacker. Additionally, during this first round, a cool check will be required for each fighter when they are activated. If failed, that fighter can only make one action instead of two. We're looking forward to an exciting 2024 with more immersive and evolving Necromunda Battle Reports. Be sure to leave us a like if you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. Turn 1 is coming up next. And starting on the board for House Orlock, we have the Road Captain Big John, along with his Arms Masters Forge and Juice. Dusty, the Gunner Specialist, is available, and two Wreckers, Crazy Jack and Spitfire, ready up. House Corridor has their Priest, Gabriel, the Deacon Ezekiel, Firebrand Jedediah, and Specialist Lazarus. Two Brethren join them, Zachariah and new recruit Arcus. They pick up three Bone Pickers with Devout Masses, swelling their ranks to nine. House Cardor did miss placing their groups of fighters. They broke into as many groups as possible. They unfortunately all had to deploy in the center. That's going to give Orlock the priority for turn one, and Spitfire is going to activate, throw out a cool check, and is going to pass, needing an eight or higher. She leaps to the top of the building and is going to unleash a hand flamer. The ammo check is good. It hits Ezekiel first, wounding on a 4, but he is going to make a mesh armor save on a 4. Does he go ablaze, needing a 4? No. Next, the Firebrand, Jedediah, takes a wound on a 4. He takes an armor save, but will fail. He is going to take a wound. They will expend Lucky Shot here to try to prevent this. It does fail. So he will be set ablaze on a 4+, plus, which is good. Next, we have a Bone Picker that was hit, and there will be no wound, but he will be set ablaze. Another Bone Picker in the back is hit, no wound, rolling up for a 4 plus blaze, and that is going to be good. With absolute chaos in the center of the board, Lazarus takes a cool check on a 6 plus. He can take two actions. He loads a crack grenade into his grenade launcher, and he fires at Spitfire, and he makes a hit. Only twos are needed to wound at strength six, which is good. No armor save here, so we go straight to an injury die. He goes down with a serious injury and a flush wound. 
So a little bit of risk reward there for House Orlock, trying to do a lot of damage but exposing one of their fighters. Juice can take two actions on his cool check, he moves to the door. The Firebrand activates, takes a strength three hit, it does not wound, he runs randomly into the wall and falls down, gets a plus two to this roll, he's looking for a six up, along with getting plus one for the fighters around him, he does extinguish the fire. Over four, House Orlock, the Arms Master Forge, passes his cool check, he can take two actions, he is just going to move forward with his dog. Over for House Cawdor, this will get a response from the Brethren Zachariah. He is going to pass his cool check, getting two actions. He moves down with the first, and he is going to unleash his blunderbuss with a flame template. The ammo check is true. He takes strength three hits onto Forge and the dog. It will do a wound on Forge. A mesh armor save will be taken, and that is good. So he does block that, although he goes down pinned. Four up blaze is successful, so he catches fire. The dog then takes a strength three hit as well. They are in cover from this template, so getting a save here on a six up, that save is good. No wound, no blaze. Next, we've got Crazy Jack successfully passing a cool check and getting two actions this turn. He is going to leap into place with his booster and unleash a hand flamer at Zachariah. The ammo check is good, but at strength 3, it does not do a wound, needing 4s here. The blaze roll was also unsuccessful. As we move back to House Cawdor, they activate Ezekiel. He does fail a cool check, only gets one action. He is just going to stand. Dusty activates, throws out a cool check, and then just moves to give assistance to Spitfire. We've then got Arcus, who will take a cool check, successfully pass. He's going to use both of his actions to move. Back to House Orlock, we do have a failed cool check from Big John. He is just going to move up, only getting one action this turn. The Bone Picker Micah will fail his cool test. He is going to just get one action this turn. He's going to scoot out of line of sight. Remaining activations belong to House Caldor. Strength 3 hit from Blaze on this Bone Picker. It's unsuccessful. He runs before falling down to impassable terrain. He is prone, so getting a plus two to the roll, looking for a six, the fire does not go out. Same thing happens with another bone picker, strength three hit is not successful, he runs into impassable terrain. Going prone to get a plus two modifier, he rolls up a four, which means it is a six, he is able to put the fire out. The priest Gabriel then activates and moves forward. So an absolutely crazy turn one comes to an end. Really unfortunate deployment for House Caldor. They got hit with a flamer where they needed an 8 plus to get two actions to even do it. And numerous fighters set ablaze. Only one wound that we saw come out of that, but there are still some fighters that are on fire. House Orlock owes a bottle. They are really good. They go to recovery, and Spitfire is going to stay down with a serious injury while also taking a flesh wound. Faith Dice will be generated, and House Orlock is going to play Seize the Initiative, taking it over for turn two. We drop right into the action. Fighters can activate as normal, and Crazy Jack uses his booster to get into range and unloads with his hand flamer. He clips the Brethren, Zachariah, as well as the Priest, Gabriel, first rolling up to wound on Zach, needing a 4+, which is successful. The armor save is failed, so an injury die rolls out here for Zach. It will be a flesh wound. We then roll for a 4-plus blaze, and that is not successful. Priest Gabriel also hit in this action. At strength 3, he's wounded on 4s, and that's good. His armor save, however, is going to be good as well. 4-up blaze roll is not successful. Priest Gabriel makes it away unscathed. Crazy Jack did not notice how close he was to Ezekiel as his weapon with that Eviscerator is versatile. Ezekiel charges into contact and is successfully engaged with his versatile rule. Two attacks base, plus one for the charge, hitting on fours. All three go through. He will wound on threes with Shred and Sever, so any injury die is going to be an out of action. That's going to be all she wrote for Crazy Jack. Now in a bit of a house rule, we only roll for one out of action. This one's going to be a 45. He'll go down to a hand injury. Up next for House Orlock, Dusty moves forward with his plasma gun, and he is going to attempt to shoot at Lazarus. Not wanting him to get off another crack grenade, he is successfully going to hit. An ammo check will be required, which is failed, so that plasma gun does jam up. 
The AP of the weapon bypasses the armor save. Two injury dice come out, and Lazarus goes out of action. The injury die is a 14, which is better enmity. The nearby bone picker fails a cool check and becomes broken. Back to House Caldor, the firebrand Jedediah, who was able to extinguish the flames on the last turn, gets to his feet. He does have a wound on him. He is just going to pull back. Meanwhile, the Arms Master Forge activates, takes a Strength 3 hit from Blaze, unsuccessful on the wound. He then randomly runs before going prone and attempts to put out the fire, which is successful. His Cyber Mastiff follows alongside of him, and Zachariah uses this opportunity to pop to his feet and then fires out his blunderbuss in purgation mode. He will successfully wound the Forge Master on a 4 the ammo check is going to be good. The save is going to be failed. Forge is going to take a wound, but lucky enough, he is not set ablaze, needing a 4+. plus. The dog is also hit. It's going to be hit on force. There is no wounds, so we'll roll for a 4-up blaze on the dog, and that is not successful. As we go back to House Orlock, Spitfire up top with two flesh wounds. He's in trouble. He is just going to attempt to crawl towards his nearest friend, Dusty. And then we've got House Caldor attempting to prime a bomb rat with a crack grenade. The prime is successful, but the intelligence check is failed. So we roll up a scatter to see what happens to this rat as he's acting on his own. He runs into the handler. A massive explosion shakes the sector as Arcus goes down pen from the crack grenade. It easily wounds on a 2+, plus and we go straight to injury dice, and it's not of action. It's a 61, which is critical, and meanwhile, Big John is moving up the field with his plasma pistol. He is going to move to where he can see Priest Gabriel and fire down at him. Big John dials his plasma gun up to maximum, and he hits on twos. With a successful hit at strength seven, twos would be needed to wound, and that is successful as well. Armor will be bypassed, and an injury dies rolled out here. Serious injury and a flesh wound for Gabriel. Next up for House Caldor, we do have a Bone Picker who gets to his feet, and he is going to use his second action just to pull back. And the reason why is we move to House Orlock, Juice using an action to open the door, and his second action with no viable targets is going to be to move through. One of the Bone Pickers activates next, he is subject to Blaze, takes a Strength 3 hit which does a wound, bypasses the armor with AP 1. An injury die does come out, it is a flesh wound. He runs before going prone and attempts to put out the fire, but he is not successful. We've then got Priest Gabriel with the tactics card Rise Anew. He regains a wound and becomes standing and active once more. And just another crazy turn in the books. The bomb rat going off in House Caldor's face. Priest Gabriel drops to a plasma shot, but is able to recover from being seriously injured with Rise Anew, a tactics card. We've got bottle checks coming out for House Orlock, which is good. House Caldor is also good. The recovery roll here for Spitfire, she's going to be in trouble. She is going out of action. She rolls up a 44, which is an eye injury. House Caldor does owe a recovery roll for one of their bone pickers. It is not going to be successful, needing an 8. That fighter will stay broken. House Caldor is generating faith dice. We gear up for turn 3. And with the initiative going to House Orlock, Big John is going to activate first, firing his plasma pistol back into Gabriel. Maximum firepower. While he hits on 2s, the ammo check has failed. The gun jams up. He does a wound on 2s. Gabriel did gain a wound back, but with three damage, two more injury dice roll out. He goes back down with a serious injury and a flesh wound. While that is taking place, Jedediah eyes down Dusty with his heavy crossbow, loads up a crack grenade, needs a five due to heavy cover, and misses. House Orlock then activates Forge. He gets to his feet, attempts to get away from all of these flame templates he is moving alongside of the building. His dog will follow. It's just not far enough, however, as Zachariah turns the corner with his blunderbuss. Again, Purgation fires it in a template setting. He does wound the dog on a 4+, plus, and the dog becomes seriously injured. 4-up blaze for the dog is not successful. We then roll to wound for Forge. It is not successful. 4-up blaze roll coming down, 
and that is not successful either. With his fellow arms master under fire, Juice is going to climb the ladder using both of his actions to move, getting onto a vantage point. We then have one of the bone pickers for House Caldor using both actions to move as they look to get closer to Forge. Dusty's plasma gun is completely broken right now. He has no ammo. He is just going to move, getting out of line of sight. Back to House Caldor, strength three hit on this bone picker. It is good at AP1, goes right to an injury die. He goes down with a serious injury. He gets a plus two to this roll, looking for a six. It is successful, he puts out the fire. And now we have Ezekiel announcing a charge around the corner into the dog, able to get there. With the poor dog seriously injured, he gives him the coup de gras with his eviscerator and rolls a 66, killing him. With House Caldor controlling the rest of the activations, one of the bone pickers here is just going to run 2d6 into the corner as he is broken. And with all that, turn 3 comes to a close. So, unfortunately for House Orlock, they did lose their Cyber Mastiff. They are, however, about to be leading in points as we look to the next turn. Bottle tests are taken. House Orlock and House Caldor will be good. Priest Gabriel bleeds out and receives horrid scars, giving him the fearsome ability moving forward. The Bone Picker rolls up a successful rally. We've got another Bone Picker staying down with a serious injury, so he will generate another flesh wound. We're going up to priority for the next turn. We're going back to House Orla. And for the opening of the turn, the Arms Master gets to his feet with his first action, fires a stub gun at Ezekiel. He does land a hit, looking for a four up to wound, not successful. The Firebrand Jedediah activates with his heavy crossbow, using both actions to move. We've then got Dusty, who is going to use both of his actions to move. And now we move back to House Caldor. One of the Bone Pickers aims and fires a auto pistol into the back of Forge, lands a hit. He takes a cool check to avoid being pinned, which is unsuccessful. The weapon is rapid fire, so two wound rolls are made. One is successful. The armor save is failed. An injury die is rolled out here for Forge, and it is a serious injury. House Orlock activates again. They send Big John forward. His plasma pistol does not have any ammo. House Caldor is going to activate next. Uh, Zachariah is going to attempt to charge into Forge, who is down with a serious injury. He is going to check up just short, however, not able to make it. His weapon is versatile, so he tries to poke him with his pole arm for two attacks. Both are unsuccessful. Next, Juice continues to move across the rooftops, looking to get into a firing position. We then have one of the bone pickers who is just going to move forward here, was able to successfully rally on that last turn. And with another turn complete, House Orlock is going to stay in the game, as is House Caldor. Neither one of these gangs are bottling at this time. Both of these gangs are still very much in this game. We do have a bleed out from another bone picker. A 46 is rolled on the lasting injury table. Forge was able to successfully roll back over with a flesh wound as we gear up for the next turn. And with priority going to House Corridor, Ezekiel wastes no time in charging into the Arms Master Forge. He's got three tacks coming across, hitting on fours as Forge rises to meet him. He wounds with Sever and Shred, so it's an automatic out of action as he just took a flesh wound. He rolls up a 25. The result is out cold, but the Arms Master Forge is removed from the game. As Ezekiel consolidates, this is going to get a reaction from Juice, the other Arms Master up top. He's been waiting for this moment. He moves to the ledge on top of the building and fires down with a shotgun. He only needs threes here, but unfortunately the shotgun misses. The Firebrand then will fire back, lands a hit, needing fives. A crack grenade coming from the bow only needs twos to wound, which is good, and it goes to an injury roll. It is an out of action, and Juice rolls up a 33. The result is convalescence, and House Orlock now realizes they are very much on the back foot. Big John is going to move. Some of the bone pickers are going to start to shuffle around to follow them. One of them moves up, gets within range of Dusty, and actually pins him. While there is no wound, Dusty gets to his feet and then makes a run for cover. Remaining fighters on the board that can still activate start to close the gap. 
on the House Orlock fires. So with a major swing in events as the turn ends, House Caldor obviously has the advantage at this point. We do roll up for bottle test. House Caldor is going to be good, and House Orlock is actually going to fail. Armsmasters aren't on the board anymore, so the Rule of Iron no longer applies, and House Orlock is going to elect to flee the battlefield. House Orlock is down to two fighters with plasma weapons, both of which are out of ammo or jammed up, and this game is going to come to a close with House Cawdor taking the victory today. What a truly exciting game that we just played. Really cool to play out and report back. We got the post game coming up. All right, welcome to the post game, and what a fun game that was. There was just a lot going on from the very beginning when. Uh, one of the wreckers had to pass an 8-up cool check, actually did it, and then got two actions, sprayed the flamer everywhere, and there was a lot of stuff going on just right out of the gate. The way that we had things set up, that actually turned out to be a really fun scenario. There was a lot of experience that went through on that one, and uh, a lot of the folks caused injuries or something else. House Cawdor had a bomb rat. We finally got those on the table, had those models painted up for a while, wanted to use them. Got him on the table, one blows up in the guy's face. It's just stuff that you can't make up and only happens in this game. This was just a ton of fun to play, film, make, everything from top to bottom was really enjoyable. Now there are a few things that we missed, one of them pretty pivotal actually, is Forge has nerves of steel so he could actually pass a cool check to not be pinned. And when he was hit with a few of those template weapons, had we have remembered that to roll that cool check, he could have avoided being pinned and potentially charged. I'm not sure if that would have changed his fate, but he would have had a better chance to survive and potentially take maybe even Ezekiel out of the game. Speaking of Ezekiel, he gets our player of the game. He did a lot of work. I think he got six experience points, if I'm not mistaken, with his participation. He took down Forge. He took down one of the Wreckers and just really went on a tear in this game. The Eviscerator is a really good weapon, strength plus one, AP one, one damage, but uh, Sever, I think it is, that causes automatic out of actions. Those are just so powerful, uh, really good weapon. We also had a lot of flame templates in this one between the Hand Flamers and House Caldor in general. So a lot of fighters went on fire, which was a lot of fun to kind of see that mechanic in play a little more. It, you know, I think it's on a four up, you get set on fire, and then when that fighter activates, they immediately take a strength three AP one hit, and then they can potentially go running around on the board and decide to become prone. And if they do, they get a plus two to their D6, and they're looking to get a six or higher, and if fighters are within an inch, they can add one to that score as well. It was just really unique seeing all of that play out with a lot of the fighters catching on fire and putting that out. We had a lot of injuries to report in this one, and you'll see all of those on the screen now. Arcus was one that was critically injured. They rolled up for 40 credits and then stabilized him, rolled a 2, so he will go into recovery, but will stay with the crew. Thought that was pretty important, as he is armed with the delivery bomb rats with crack grenades. Sadly, we saw one of the dogs get killed for House Orlock at the hands of Ezekiel. House Orlock actually made it out for the most part okay with Forge just going out cold, Juice going into convalescence, and there's a hand and an eye injury to the Wreckers, but with their flame templates, it's not really going to impact them that much. And that wraps up our first game of Necromunda for 2024. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to know about any kind of channel support or anything like that, links will all be down in the description. It's by no means necessary. If you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support the channel. Any kind of donations or anything like that that you feel does help us print off more terrain and things like that to make our battlefields more immersive. It's always a pleasure to make these battle reports, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.